Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to show you how to play Hoplomachus Rise of Rome. The last video we did was Hoplomachus The Lost Cities, which is the first game in the Hoplomachus series. Rise of Rome is the second. And as you can see, it's got a different, but still very nice, neoprene mat. Um, and there will be some differences in this game in terms of uh, how crowd favor works, how do gladiators deploy, but most interestingly for solo players, we are going to be playing against one of the Titans, a powerful AI opponent that will give us a bit of a challenge. So first we're going to challenge a Titan. I'm going to go with the easy one, which is actually still, he still puts up a pretty good fight, uh, Menoetius. Uh, he has his HP, his attack range, and the dice that he needs listed at the top of his card. There's a card for each of the Titans that has very specific setup instructions. It's very helpful actually. Um, so here are his details. So we know that he can't be damaged by basic attacks. Um, most gladiators have alternate attacks or abilities to use, so we'll have to keep that in mind as we play. Um, if we stun Minoetius, he's never actually stunned um, like through his turn where he can't move. But if you stun him, it allows you to do damage to him using a basic attack. So there's a reason to stun him even if it doesn't actually stun him through his turn. Um, one other thing that's interesting about this game is that you have a pillar set up. So when they talk about pillars, these are these four um, gray spots at the edges of the arena. So these are basically pillars where in Minoetis' case, we are going to put some shards that cause him to gain health when we attack the shard pillars. But once we have those shards, it allows our gladiators to attack him like normal and have extended movement. The other thing is that he can't actually lose his last life until three of the shards are active. So even though Minoetius doesn't summon other uh, fighters to help him, we still have a task to complete before we can actually take him out. So we know that Minoetius has five health, so here's his chip, and we're gonna put five health under it right there in the center of the battle arena. We're also gonna set up these four shards, each of which has four health on each of the pillars. They're gonna start out, they have, or they are double-sided, so this black and white side is inactive. The colorful side is active. So they're gonna start out inactive until we start attacking the pillars that they're on. All right, so now our pillars are all set up, and that basically means that our Titan setup is done, and we can pick a city and get ourselves ready to go. So just to give you guys a look, here are our chips for Rome. That's the city that we're going to play. Um, Rise of Rome adds two new cities to the Hoplomachus universe. They are Rome and Pompeii. And just so you guys know, all of the cities from both Lost Cities and Rise of Rome can be used in either game. So you can play with Rome or Pompeii in the Lost Cities, or we can play with Xanadu, El Dorado, and Atlantis in Rise of Rome. But here we have one champion, as expected, 10 gladiators, and four tactics. And that's what we have to work with in our battle against Menoetius the Titan. Hadrian, our champion, is going to start out inactive and with 10 health. We can choose to put him on one of these champion deployment squares. So I'm going to go ahead and choose one of these spots um, and we'll place him with his health chips. All right, so now Hadrian is ready to rock. FYI, if he dies, we lose the game. Our goal is to get rid of the Titan. The Titan's goal ultimately is to kill our champion because once Hadrian is gone, it's over. To pick our city gladiators, we're actually just going to mix them up and put six into a bag. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And these will be the gladiator chips that go into this bag for us to draw. So now that we've drawn our gladiators, we also get to choose a tactic. So let's think about this. Unit is stunned for one round, but no bosses, titans, or champions. I mean, we're fighting a titan, so this is automatically out. This one's also no bosses, titans, or champions. No. Increase a non-champion unit's range by one, maybe. Or we can add two health to a friendly non-champion unit. I think we're gonna take this one because it seems like it could come in the most handy, especially because units with shards already have plus one movement. So this is the tactic we're gonna take. So now we're gonna draw our first four chips from the bag. There's seven chips in here, six gladiators and one tactic. So let's see what we get. Okay, so we got a Roman attacker. One of the good things about him is that he has the ability to retaliate when he gets hit. Yes. And he also does an alternate attack called Whirlwind. It's just a blue die, but it's an alternate attack, which is good against the Titan. So he'll go here, our prep area. What else have we got? Okay, so we have a Roman defender. So he can defend other units. 
Um, and he can reposition himself. I mean, he's not great in terms of the kinds of attacks that we can use unless he's got um, a shard, but we can use him to help protect others. All right, we have pulled a Roman tactician who has a strategic attack. He also has this one hit, no roll, but that is his basic. Okay, so basically we're gonna, we're gonna have to figure out how best to use this guy, unless we can get him with a shard as well. Because remember, no basic attacks can be used on this Titan. We've also pulled our tactic, so we can restore somebody's health at some point. So now our guys are all set up, and that just leaves one more aspect of setup before we can start to play, and that's crowd favor. So crowd favor works a little bit differently in Rise of Rome than it did in Lost Cities. Um, in Lost Cities, you had this kind of linear crowd favor track that was like a long sword going up the side of the board. Now you actually get to choose which unlocks you want by going in different directions. The only thing is that the crowd favor gladiator it has to come last. So I've randomly drawn a gladiator and we're just going to put him here. Hopefully we can get to him at some point in this game because the crowd favor gladiators are always fun. And then the other chips are these kind of double-sided chips. So one side says foothold, the other side will be an archer. In this case, I went with the Amazonian archers because I think that they are cool and that's how we're gonna roll. Um, so basically they are stationed attackers who basically are on a set, um, a set location. And so basically that you can only put them on these pillars. So I'd have to get rid of um, all of the health under one of these shards and like carry the shard away in order to be able to put an archer here And then once she was here, she'd be stationary. So she's vulnerable to attack But at the same time she you know is an extra fighter that we have and can do some more distance attacking because she's an archer So there's a benefit and a cost to that the foothold basically allows me to lay claim to a space that is only mine You can play it on any hex except for the Titan hex one of these pillars or um, a hex that your opponent is currently occupying. But once you have a foothold, then your enemy cannot go there at all. Only you can go there. So I can potentially use a foothold at some point in the game to make it more annoying for Minoetes to reach me or to get around. And these chips will just go here and I can use either side as I like. So we'll just put them like this to show that that's the case. Crowd favor also works a bit differently in Rise of Rome in terms of how you get it. So in the Lost Cities, to get crowd favor, there were contested spaces that you could occupy. Those are not on this board. The other way to get crowd favor was to defeat enemy units or bosses. And obviously that's there's not gonna be enemy units for us to even go at in this game, but that's okay because it works differently now. Basically every enemy health chip we remove results in one crowd favor point. So if I hit this for one, then I'll get one point. If I hit it for two, I'll get two and so on. So basically every time you do five damage to the enemy of some kind, you get some kind of reward. Um, the rewards also come with some unlocks. So my champion starts out inactive, but if I choose to go this direction, I can activate him, whether or not he's been hit. Here I can reroll one basic attack die per turn. Um, this one is the la this is the last one I can do, so that's when I get my gladiator. But first, you know, you can use all deployment hexes, um, or you can um, move a foothold to an adjacent hex. So once footholds are placed, normally they can't be moved. But if you've already got a foothold, then you might want to go here and then move it one over. And just to clarify this, the significance behind, behind you may now use all deployment hexes. So especially if we were playing a two-player game, this would be my half of the board and that would be my opponent's half. So I would have access to these deployment hexes, the ones that are invitingly bloody, but not these. However, the ones in the middle are shared. Technically, I can deploy gladiators to this middle ring if I so choose. Of course, that's also where Menoetius starts, so, you know, your mileage may vary. So now it's actually time to play. Um, we are going to start with phase one, which is unit and tactic deployment. So on each turn, I can play one gladiator or one tactic. So this time I want to deploy, actually, I want to deploy my tactician. Uh, he has two health, which isn't a whole lot, but he has three movement and an automatic no roll hit uh, attack. So what I'd like to do is I want to deploy him here. He has an ability called initiative. 
So uh, he can move, um, actually before, so normally when you first um, bring out a unit, they have summoning sickness essentially, where they cannot move and they cannot attack on the turn that, de that they are deployed. However, the tactician has a special ability called initiative. So what that means is that he can actually move now and I don't have to wait until next turn to move him. It doesn't really matter, but it just seems kind of nice. So why don't we just go ahead and take advantage of the fact that he has a special ability and move him down towards this shard. So obviously next turn, we're gonna hit it, which is gonna render it active and attract Minoetes' attention. But this shard isn't active now. And what that's gonna mean, as you'll see, is that Minoetes is actually gonna go for our champion, which means he's got more distance to cover before he can get to this active shard. So I'm trying to buy myself a little time. So I deployed my unit. Technically step two is movement. We actually did manage to move because my unit had a special ability called initiative, um, but he still can't attack. So the phase three of your turn is attack, but he can't attack on the first turn. His special ability only allowed him to move. So here he is, no one's attacking, no one's doing anything. Hadrian is still inactive because he has not been activated by crowd favor. So now that we've done our thing, it's Minowaitis' turn. So all of his movement is gonna be determined by the dice that we roll. So we know that he has one black, one green, two blue, and two yellow dice. I have collected all of those here. We're gonna roll them and depending on the number of hits that he got, that will determine the entire rest of his move. All right, so let's roll these and see what we get. Wow, that was a terrible roll for Minoetius, but we'll take it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, now that we have these rolls, he only got a hit on this black die, which is amazing, actually. So um, we are going to go down this, this basically this flow chart and see what happens. Now that we've zoomed in a bit, let's talk through it. So the first thing is movement. Um, we have rolled our dice. He only got a hit on this black die, so he is going to move. If he'd got a hit on the black and the green die, he would have done an aggressive move, which means that he would have moved twice. However, that did not happen. He only got one hit. To move him, we're gonna roll a d6, and I'm gonna show you how that works in just a moment. The next thing on here is called special. Fortunately, he did not actually roll any hits on the blue dice, which means that he will not do any of his special attacks, but had he done so, he would have performed something called a shard shock or a shard slam. None of our units have gotten any of these shards yet, but once you destroy a pillar, the shard becomes active and your unit starts to carry it around. The shard shock and shard slam attacks cause damage to the units who are holding those shards which causes them to drop them and causes them to go inactive, which means that Minoetius is more difficult to defeat. Because remember, three shards have to be active at the time you take his last health in order for him to die. So this is his way of getting those shards away from you, even after you've already acquired them. And then the yellow is for his basic attack. If you had rolled a hit on one, you would roll a d6 and he would attack based on that roll. So melee, range, or two range attack, or three range attack, his attacks range depending. Um, or if you had rolled two yellow hits, he could have done a double strike, which means that he could perform his basic attack twice. Fortunately, neither of these things happened. He's only gonna move. So I'm gonna show you how his movement works, and then it'll be back to us. To move Minoetis, we're gonna roll one D6 die. Okay, so we rolled a one. What that means, so on a one to three, the instructions say move one towards the closest active shard is the first thing in the list. However, there are no active shards right now, so he can't actually do that. The next thing on the list then is for him to move one space towards the champion. So that he's going to do. Now that we've rolled this one. So he is gonna go either here or here. They're equidistant from the champion. I'm gonna go for this one because I'm planning to go at these shards and I don't want it to be too easy for him to get over to them once they become active. So that's my current strategy. Minowaitis has done his turn. He didn't get to do too much, but that will change very shortly. Now it's back to us. I really should have done this at the end of my last turn, but I can draw back up to fill up my deployment spaces. 
Okay, so we have a Roman attacker who also has that whirlwind alternative attack, which is great because it means theoretically he could attack Minoetes. Excellent. What I need to do now is deploy someone. Um, I'm not going to use my tactic yet, obviously, because I only want to add health to someone who actually needs it. What I do want to do is pick who I should deploy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this attacker right here. So he's going to start with three health chips. And we'll put them right here. What I'm thinking I can actually do is move here and start hitting this chip. Alternatively, I can move him up here, have him start going this way, and then put one of his buddies down here to go after this chip so that Minoetius has a lot of different fuel fires to deal with on his end. Now that I have um, deployed someone, what I actually get to do now is move. However, he can't move because he was just deployed and he does not have a special ability, so he's gonna hang out here. He can't attack. He can't move, he's just gonna be here. I could move my tactician. I think I am going to do that. He's already next to this shard, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move him here to give him, to create more movement issues for Minoetius and try to get my guys spread out across the board a little bit. So he's still next to this shard, however. So now that my movement phase is over, and of course Hadrian's not going anywhere because he's still inactive, um, my tactician is going to attack this shard pillar right here. I'll just move it up so you can see it. Sorry about the things kind of, this board is pretty big. Um, so he is going to do what's called a one hit, no roll. So basically my tactician can't attack super high, but he always gets a hit, no matter what, without having to roll. What he's gonna do now is he is just gonna go ahead and go whap. He's gonna hit this pillar, the shard is now active, which is why it's on its more colorful side. The other cool thing is that because I have taken a health from this pillar, I start to get crowd favor. So I'm gonna get my very first crowd favor. It's gonna go up one. I've decided I'm gonna to move towards this one, this reward first, because it says you may now use all deployment hexes. And the reason I would like to be able to do that is if I can come over here, that means I can also deploy guys on the other side of the board, which will hopefully create more options for me as I'm dealing with Minoetius. One of the bad things about damaging a pillar and making a shard active, however, is that once you have made a shard active, that means that Minoetius gains the health chip that you took off of that pillar. So collecting a shard is actually pretty great in terms of attacking him. It's also horrible because you give him life every time you attack it. Fortunately, the shard is active now. I only need three active shards to kill him. However, um, that may not be a great idea to, to actually destroy a bunch of the pillars and collect and carry the shards around because he started with five health. There's four health chips under each of these pillars. Even if I only took the 12 health from three of them, that would bring his total health up to 17. So a lot of the game is balancing how much health do I want to give him versus how much power do I want to take by actually picking shards up. Now our turn is over and it's back to Minoetius. So let's roll his little dice and see what he's going to do. Hmm. So according to this little help, Minoetius isn't going to move. He um, didn't get a hit on his black die, which means that he doesn't meet the requirements for either of his movements. So that is not gonna happen this turn. He's not gonna move, so his movement dice can go to the side. He is gonna perform what's called a shard slam because he got two blue hits. Yikes. What that means is that a shard shock does one damage to all adjacent units. A shard slam performs the shard shock and also all units who are holding a shard, which is no one fortunately right now, are stunned and they take one damage. Woof. So, all that means is that this tactician down here who was next to a shard is gonna take a little shard shock. Zzz, he loses a health chip. So that's unfortunate for him, but no one's dead yet, so I'll take it. The next thing that Minoetis is gonna do is a basic attack, but because he got two hits on these yellow dice, he is gonna do a double strike and perform a basic attack twice. So we're gonna see if he's gonna hit my champion or not. So now we're going to roll and see if my champion's going to take any damage. One thing that is different about Rise of Rome as opposed to Lost Cities 
is that my champion can only be activated using this crowd favor meter over here. I can't activate him by him taking damage. I chose to go for the deployment unlock first because of the way that many ways he attacks. I figured that it would be more productive to keep him running around the board for a little bit, but uh, I could be wrong about that. But he will not activate even if he gets hit until I activate him over here using crowd favor. So I also have to take some damage, we'll do some damage rather, in order to get my champion active. If Minoetis hits him, he's just gonna have to sit there and take it. So according to this um, attack scheme, Minoetis is gonna perform his basic attack twice because he's gonna do a double strike. What that means is I'm going to roll a d6 twice. If I roll a one to three both times, it's a melee attack that only goes one range and my champion is not hurt. If he rolls a four to six, then he is going to perform a range attack. Uh, and these are the attack dice that he does that with. So first, let's see if he does a melee attack at all. Or an attack at all. So let's see. A two. Okay, so that would have been a melee attack. There's no point bothering to roll dice because my champion is too far away for a melee attack. Let's see if he gets him a second time. Another two. Okay, so thankfully, Minoetius didn't do anything to my champion. And he just kind of had a pretty useless turn, except that he zapped my tactician for one. That is not bad for us. But as you can see, Minoetius has the power to do a lot worse. The other thing I want to mention is that Minoetius will move towards a champion, typically. But his main preference, if there's an active shard, is to move towards that shard. Why would that be, you ask? Because if my tactician's moving along here, there's no one to attack. The reason is that when Minoetes gets close enough to these pillars, he changes the shards back from active to inactive, and he adds health to those columns. And don't forget, every single time uh, we take health from one of the pillars, that health goes to Minoetes. So we have to be really careful about handling him and keeping things active because we need to make sure his health doesn't get out of control, and we also need to make sure that we're doing what we need to do to make it possible to kill him. Let's do one more turn round and then we'll call it a game so that you guys can go and try this awesomeness for yourselves. What I need to do first is deploy a gladiator. Well, not deploy, draw one from the bag to potentially deploy. Let's figure out who I drew. Okay, so I got a Roman Hoplomachus. Exciting, he has four health. He can stun, which means that he makes it possible for others to use their basic attacks against Minoetius, which is pretty great. Um, he doesn't move a whole lot, but he's good. He's got some good skills. He's one of the Rome's special gladiators. So I'm glad that we just pulled him. Obviously I want to deploy someone. I'm going to deploy them to either here. Yeah, I think here is good or maybe here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and deploy my Hapomachus. I'm going to put him here with his four health. He can't move or attack this round, but hey, that's great. We have him. We're going to do something about it. And also, why don't we do things right this time and actually pull our next deployment ship now. We're running out of them already. You don't, you don't start the, whole, the game with that many. So here's our last ship from the bag. And we got a Roman Hoplomachus again. Okay, so that's actually not too bad. It would have been cool to have an archer, but I'm not displeased with what was in the bag at setup. Now it's time to move. Both of these guys can move and I need to make some choices about how I want to handle this. I'd really like to get some more crowd favor, but I also extremely don't want to leave all my guys vulnerable to Minoetius. I know that he's gonna to want to move here right now because he'll move towards the closest shard, but this one's actually closer. So if I move here and attack it, he'll come this way instead. It's not necessarily a bad thing. The other thing I need to do is I have to move before I attack. So I can't do something sneaky with my tactician, like whack this pillar and then move this way. I have to move first. So I need to make decisions about what I think is actually important right now. I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave my tactician where he is and then move him this way next turn to activate another shard. I'm gonna move my attacker here and then we are going to attack this pillar. One of the problems is that if we attack it too hard, we accidentally give Minoetius a whole bunch of health, but that's just the name of the game here. So the tactician's gonna do a no hit one. This health will go to Minoetius, but we are gonna get a crowd favor. Then we're gonna use the attacker 
Uh, and he is going to use his normal ability to attack this pillar and activate this shard. So he's going to roll a yellow, a blue, and a black die, because those are the dice that are specified on the chip. And we'll see how many hits he gets. Okay, only one. That's actually not too bad a thing, because it makes the shard active and only gives one health to Menoetes. And we also get another crowd favor. That means that within the next couple turns, we're gonna be able to start deploying from over here too, which makes it a lot easier to move around Menoetius and get it shards, which is great. And that was our turn. Our champion's still not doing anything. So now it's Menoetius' turn. This is the last turn I'm gonna show you guys on camera, just because this game can go for a while and um, I wanna make sure that you get a sense of the rules, but that I don't hold you for too long. So let's go ahead and roll for Menoetius. All right, what's our buddy gonna do? Let's find out. Ooh, okay. So he rolled a hit on the black, no hit on the green. One, one, two. Okay. So this isn't gonna be good news for my tactician, but that's okay. We'll show you how it works. So what this means, according to Minuatius's card, is that he got one hit, so we're gonna roll a d6. He's gonna move towards the closest active shard, which is gonna be this one. So let's roll it and see how far he moves. All right, we'll just count it. So he rolled a two. He's gonna move one towards the closest active shard. So he's gonna come this way, moving in this direction. Because he got one hit on the blue, he is going to perform a shard shock, which means that this all active shards do one damage to all adjacent units. So what that means is that this tactician who's adjacent just lost his last health, ah, just lost his last health and died, which is very unfortunate. So we just lost a guy, and our attacker is also going to take one hit. So making these shards active is not a particularly safe activity for my gladiators. It's something that I have to think about as we go. But we have two active shards, and what that means, if we want to send some people after Menoetius to use alternate attacks, that may not be a terrible idea. The last thing is going to be his attacking again. So because once again he got these two uh, hits, he is going to attack the... So basically the way this is going to work is that within range, he will attack the shard unit first, but no unit has a shard. He'll attack the weakest unit next. The weakest unit is determined by number of health chips. So basically, if he rolls a two again, he'll just hit my champion. But if he can hit within three, he'll attack my, um, my Roman attacker instead. Let's see what he ends up being capable of doing with this D6. Oof. So he rolled a five. What that means is he is going to hit my champion. So how, how much four? We'll find out. His basic attack dice are a green, a blue, a blue, and a yellow. So we will grab those and see how many hits he gets. Oh man, he just took three health off of my champion. That was very unfortunate, but that's okay. Life goes on. Um, and now he's gonna roll one more time and we'll see if he hits anyone. All right, so that was a one. He doesn't hit anyone because that's only one melee range. Um, so as you can see, he can do some pretty d a, a bunch of damage to you pretty quick. It is not fun. Um, and that's one of the things that makes these Titan battles difficult, but also really enjoyable. I really like the AI, the AI for these. Each of the Titans works very differently, and Minoetes is actually the easiest one. The others are much, much more challenging, I would say. And so even Minoetes can put up a very legit fight against you, and it's really, really fun to try to figure out how to strategically move around the board to manage him, manage your champion, manage your deployment spaces, use your tactics at the right time. I really, really love what Rise of Rome adds to the Hoplomachus series. I would say that combined with the Lost Cities together, they're absolutely one of my five-star games. I'm so happy to have these in my collection, and I hope that I've given you a taste of why that would be. Happy gaming.